Well, in 1968, uh, I was married to Tony Jane. We'd been married for three years, had no children because she miscarried. And um, I got a draft notice from Uncle Sam that I was being drafted into the United States uh, uh, Army. And uh, so at the age of 20, I found myself on a bus going up to Columbia, South Carolina, and uh, we was in a big uh, uh, room full of young men in there that had been drafted, all being drafted, and the sergeant that was there, he says, is there any of y'all that would like to go into the Marine Corps? And myself and a couple other young men raised our hand, a very small, it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't that many, but uh, at any rate, the reason that I chose to go into the Marine Corps because my best friend in high school, Dennis Michael from Vacaville, California, was in the Marine Corps and uh, got himself killed in Waste City there in uh, February 68. And so uh, at that time, that's one of the reasons I chose to go into the Marine Corps and raise my hand because at that time my immature thinking was, well, I just wanted to go over there and kill the son of a bitch that killed my best friend. So can you walk me through, so you get there in September 68, is that right? First day of September 68, yeah, that's right. And can you take me through that one more time? So you land and you're, you're already taking rocket fire. Yeah, that's within 20 minutes of getting landing into Da Nang on that commercial airline. We had rocket attacks that was coming in. Everybody was jumping in the bunkers. We didn't have, we didn't have guns at that time. And the young man in the bunker at the end of the bunker is making the sign of the cross. And I'm going, how in the hell am I supposed to be here 13 months? And I've been here 20. That was a, my awakening. Yeah, I got awoke. <laughs> so they, yeah. they put you in dog company in... Uh, Delta. Uh, or Delta company. Delta. Yeah, Delta yeah we company. called it, we called it die in Delta. Yeah. Delta Company. That's right, Delta. Okay. And uh, how long is it before you're actually out doing patrols or out? Um... Well, once you get in, once you get, uh, in my experience was, uh, I think you'll find quite interesting actually, that when they dropped us off at the helicopter there at Delta Company, the night before the company had been overrun out there by the VC out there. And there was the, a young man that was coming back from patrol. This was after all that action had happened. Coming back from patrol and for this young Marine and then on his helmet, he's got a scalp. He scalped somebody and he's got a scalp that he's got on his helmet. All right. So I got my welcoming and awakening in Da Nang. And then when I got out to the jungle, I got my Welcome to the jungle, Tony. Here you are. Oh, yeah. Anybody out there that's been under fire by an 8K-47 understand what I'm talking to you here today put the fear of God in you. And if you don't, well, there's something wrong with you, <laughs> at least from my perspective. Yeah. The firefight, it wasn't very, you know, it was like, I can't remember exactly when the first uh, 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 firefight was. I just remember uh, uh, being there uh, like the first couple of nights and not being able to sleep up, you know, you got your weapon, your, M your M16 right there, you know, so uh, you're wide awake, you know, and that kind of stuff, yeah, adrenaline. Yeah. So I don't remember when the first firefight was, but I'll, I'll tell you one that uh, uh, you might find interesting. Uh, Delta Company, our squad, was walking across one of the dikes, and I'm carrying a law at this time, okay, and my, my M16 and a law that I have. We get out into the middle of the rice paddy as the, all the grunts out there in the Army and the Marine Corps know that when you're out there on that dike, uh, you are vulnerable because you're out in the open. Boom, 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 boom. About halfway out there, we come under that AK-47 fire. Boom, 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 boom. Fall down into, fall down into the rice paddy. I'm in the water, in the mud. Bullets are all flying around. And I look up into the sky, 
I remember looking up in the sky, and the sky was all nice and blue. And I said, oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for not letting me be dead right now. And then I looked down and saw where the hell I was. I said, well, it ain't over yet. <laughs> so anyway, that's, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, a young Marine at that time did receive a uh, bullet wound that he received directly uh, to, right directly to his uh, forehead at that time. And only by the grace of God do I sit here telling that story and may his spirit and all of the rest of them that lost their lives and have suffered to this day, may they find peace. Uh, when I was over there, I, stepped, I was this close, I was stepping on a 155 artillery route, a little dome, a little dome button, the silver, Pressure release, you put your foot on it, it's okay, you take your foot off, you're, you're blown to a thousand different pieces. The young man behind me, by the name of Warren Brayton, uh, who could sense uh, booby traps, we can call them booby traps back then, uh, who could sense them in the night, and he says to me, Tony, look what you almost stepped on. He called up demolition, blew it up. I could see my guts draped all over the trees out there, but in banana trees, like tinsel on a Christmas tree. And a, uh, a young man uh, that I knew over there, Marine, uh, by the name of Skip By, Robert Anthony By was his name, had the grave misfortune of stepping on a 155 artillery round and went home as all of y'all people know that are grunts and been there and have done that. You go home and big, big uh, manila envelopes that they scrape you up in and put you in and take you home. And only by the grace of God that it wasn't uh, uh, myself. And I'm grateful and I'm thankful for that. It was at Liberty Bridge on the 19th day of March in 1969, Delta Company had come out of what we call the bush back to what we call the rear area where it was battalion headquarters. You got the barbed wire uh, all around you there. You got your tanks, you got your artillery, you got your artillery in there. So the grunts like us, they call it in and they, they you know, and so, now, when, you, when we're out in the bush out there, you know, we're uh, eating out of a, a tin can. This is before the sea rats and eating out of a, a, a tin uh, uh, cans and that sort of stuff. So, and uh, sleeping on the ground. So like when we come back to that battalion headquarters, like dying and going to heaven, they had a damn chow hall, they got outhouses that you can sit your ass on, take a dump, instead of having to do it out in the damn jungle, okay? And, uh, and a chow hall and all, all of that good stuff. We say, we're back there for, you know, what, four, five, six days, something like that, you know, getting some good hot meals and stuff like that. Liberty Bridge, yeah. Many of y'all out there have been there to Liberty Bridge. You know all about it. Yeah, March 19th, 1969, Delta Company. And uh, so, the, about two o'clock at night there, uh, the NVA, regular NVA come in there with Bangalore torpedoes for the first time ever the whole time I was there, flamethrowers, and a bunker next to us, the Marines in there were, 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 uh, uh, were killed, burnt unto, uh, burnt unto death, and, uh, uh, Bangalore torpedoes blowing up the wire coming in there. They had incendiary grenades that they had coming down and throwing the incendiary grenades down the barrels of the howitzers and melt them on all, uh, uh, melt them on all up. And there, and they hit us right at about two o'clock at night. And this goes on all night long. That this uh, goes on, maybe at about five o'clock in the uh, in the morning. Uh, myself and another marine pulled. A corpsman, a naval corpsman, Doc Hammond, out of the uh, out of a hole there, and he had been shot in the head. And when we pulled him out, his brain matter fell on my foot, and it was barefoot at that time. I took my boots off so they didn't get all bloody and uh, gangrene and that crap. And I remember looking up into the sky when and, and, and all this shit is going on, you know and saying, I have, got to, I have got to get the hell out of here. Yeah. How close are the enemy getting to you, though, when, when this is happening? They did not get as close to me 
as they did to, uh, uh, to others. I did not engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but I remember after all this was over, about nine, ten o'clock in the morning, everybody's, I'm tired, I'm hungry, I'm sitting down, I'm sitting down, sitting down on the ground, and I'm eating what we call, all you grunts out there know what we call that chocolate bar, I call that the shit bar. So I'm sitting there and I'm eating a shit bar, that chocolate chip tastes pretty good too. And about maybe 15 feet away from me is a Viet Cong or a NVA, whatever he was, that had been run over by a tank. And when the tank guy was running over him, he does that little thing like that to twist them all in so he's down in the ground. And the only thing human that you can discern from this guy was basically his thumb. Everything else was just a big mess. And I'm eating my shit bar. And this is how callous that I had become. I was only 21 years old at, uh, at, that, at that time. But as I'm eating my shit bar and looking at this, this mangled corpse, as someone that was wanted to kill me, I don't blame them. I'm, I'm looking, I'm saying, and I'm thinking, I'm glad, that, I'm glad that's you and not me. That's how callous you got. Yeah. From my knowledge, I have no direct knowledge of directly killing uh, any enemy at all. Okay. Because the firefights that you have, you got, you know, sometimes, you, well, everybody's shooting and fighting. You don't know. I just really don't have any idea. So I really have a, I don't have, a, you know, the, the, the memory of somebody's uh, a, a, a life fading or something like that, you know, but, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. before we move on from the combat, can we, uh, I want to hear how you were wounded one more time and, because you, you were hit twice, is that right? Yes, yeah, you got a piece of shrapnel that went through my left leg, piece of shrapnel that went into my stomach had a uh, cerebral concussion by a grenade that uh, went off behind me that was tripped by another young Marine. And the, the grenade, that piece of, the, the piece that hit me over here in this leg over here, hit him in a worse spot directly behind, behind the kneecap. And uh, so we wound up both being in the hospital there in Da Nang at the same time. And it was our great uh, pleasure and uh, blessing and memory for me to have uh, the, uh, the great actor and military uh, man himself, Officer Jimmy Stewart, that uh, came through with his wife and through with the hospital there. And then he comes up to me when I'm laying in the bed and he does that stuttering thing. He goes, he goes, oh, where, 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 where'd you get hit, son? So it was, uh, that was a real pleasure to have... Uh, to met uh, to met him. Yeah. My th my final thought would be more kind of what I was just it had been already said about. Hopefully someday we'll be able to rise above uh, all of this. Uh, today today truly I am uh, uh, blessed uh, with uh, inner joy and uh, uh, inner peace, regardless of the many tragedies that have come to me. And uh, I I uh, it's a tragedy all of the. Vietnam veterans and the other veterans today that are coming home and uh, uh, commit suicide, lose hope and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, just uh, maybe let go, let God relax, take it easy, and uh, you know, everything's gonna, everything's gonna be all right. Uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, everybody have a nice talking with you and uh, call me. <laughs> we'll do lunch. <laughs>